And now we are into the last character changes from Honkai Star Patch 2.4. March 7 surprisingly already had a good kit to begin with, even though she is a 4 star only. But the developers still decided to make some changes to her kit. And are they a good one? Or they make Marsh's kit become worse? In this video, we are going to discuss together some of her kit, changes, and eidolons. As usual, I will also state some of her possible builds. So let's start! The new variation Marsh 7 is a 4-star imaginary hunt type. She is capable of dealing a great amount of damage, as well as to give one of her allies a support in the form of speed boost and additional damage. It is safe to say she has multiple roles that can fit into many kinds of team comps, starting from becoming a hyper carry, sub DPS, as well as a breaker. Starting from her base stats, March underwent some adjustments. Both of her HP and defense were slightly buffed and instead, her speed is slightly nerfed. Her previous trait stats were HP, attack, and crit rate, but now they swapped the crit rate with crit damage instead. Getting a crit rate stats is kind of difficult, and her crit number before was quite high, so she is a little bit hard to build now, so I guess it's a nerf for her. There's nothing much change from her skills and ultimate, both are still the same, except her enhanced basic attack. It has the same description as before, this skill initially has 3 hits, she has 60% best chance to unleash more sword slash after the final hits, and can be done up to 3 times. But her multiplier is nerfed now. This is probably because she was so strong before, even one of her showcase videos in the internet shows that she can easily deal above 100k damage per enhanced basic attack if you dominate the RNG and land all 8 slash hits. And also, this is due to her additional damage that follows her master combat type. For each slash that landed on the enemy, March will deal around 2k or more elemental damage, depending on her master's element. And that is not a small amount of numbers. So yeah, the multiplier nerf is… makes sense, since she's going to be a 4 star that we can get complete with her Eidolons sometime later. And then there's also some adjustment to her A6 trace. The old one was granting herself a 10% speed boost whenever her master is on the field. But now the good news is, this become, after casting enhanced basic attack, her master will gain 60% crit damage and 35% break effect. If you notice, this is supposed to be her old 6 Eidolon. And now it may seem like there's nothing changed, but the reality is, we cannot get her full Eidolons at the start of patch 2.4. So to gain access earlier to her E6 once she is released later is really great. And what happened to her old A6 and her new 6 Eidolon now? For her old first Eidolon, it is supposed to be boosting her enhanced basic attack crit damage by 36% after she cast her ultimate. And now it changed to her old A6 trace, where she gains 10% speed boost when her master is present on the battlefield. Yes, her A6 now become her first Eidolon. And lastly, her 6 Eidolon now become her first old one. But in the new version, her enhanced basic attack rate damage is boosted from 36 to 50%. Overall, this is just a swapping game, there's not much of a change, except the nerf on her multiplier, but a buff on her new 6 Eidolon. So it's a balanced adjustment for her. Since she can be a unit that fit into two teams variation, crit and break, so which one is the best for her? I have calculated her damage before in my previous video about her V1 kit, you can check it if you want. This is the comparison between her crit numbers before and after the nerf at talent level 10 and both are at her full Eidolons. If we are looking at her 8 hits, the difference is only around 2.58% and to me it's quite low and this doesn't make her a terrible unit now. Remember, this is still her raw damage only, additional buffs from her teams are not yet included. And to see that she still deals a huge amount of numbers, I guess her crit build is still relevant and worth it. And this is her personal super break damage, where there are two different situations. The first one is when her master is from the path of destruction, hunt, and erudition. And the other one is when she offers a boba tea to the remaining paths, since her skill allows her to increase her toughness reducing damage, thus resulting in a greater damage outcome. And to choose which one is the most effective build to use, I think it's still the crit build. Yes, it may be more difficult to build since you have to balance her crit stats, plus now her crit rate from her trace is gone. But it's not like you will lose some of her damage output when you stick to crit build. She can still be very helpful in break teams despite using a crit build, for example in a team comp like this. 
This is due to her skill and the option to decide which master she's going to serve. In break teams like this, it is recommended to make the sustain or the harmony units to be her master, since she will increase her own toughness reducing damage and make the depletion of the enemy's toughness bar faster, while still doing some significant critical damage. In this case, she will also weaken the enemy's toughness that has fire weakness due to one of her traces, and this makes a unit like Firefly happy. When it comes to March Relic options, a 4-piece set of Musketeer is a great choice. It has additional attacks, basic attack damage boost, and also speed to cover up the nerfs on her trace stats. A 4-piece Wastelander is also great, you can bring along an Ahelita unit in your party. The sustain here can use Trend LC to make sure that every enemy on the battlefield is inflicted with debuffs to get the best out of this Relic's passive. This situation also applies when you want to use a 4-piece Pioneer on March. But I think out of these three, Musketeer is more flexible to use. You can also use these sets if you want to build a full break march. There are plenty of variations of planner sets that can be used by her. Start from space ceiling stations to get more attacks since she has a quite low base stat. And then Rutiland Arena to increase her basic attack damage further. But take a note that your crit rate needs to be at least 70% or higher to trigger this passive. And it may be challenging and not comforting for some players. Planner like Izumo is surprisingly a good match for her, in case you want to pair her with Topaz in a follow-up team. This planner facilitates easier building for Marsh since it gives the wearer a good amount of crit rate, if there's at least one ally in the team that has the same type as the user. And then you can also go for a supportive options, like Ageless since she has a high base speed so this passive will be easily triggered together with speed boots. And then Broken Kill can be great too, especially if you are using a Venturin to get that 50% effect resistance from his shield. And the last one is not recommended but can be still valid, which is Penahony. Actually, there is quite a lot of variety for her 5 star Redcon options, starting from in the night. This LC has great additional crit stats, and then March Enhanced Basic Attack can benefit more from this passive. Having a high base speed and using a 4-piece Musketeer set together with speed boots and her E1, her speed can reach 147 already. And then Sleep Like the Dead can be a good option too since it offers a high crit stats. The best F2P LC option for her is, no doubt, the Stellar Cruise. It gives high attack and crit rate as well and it's free. Other LCs like Warisome Blissful surprisingly works too with E2 March that has follow-up attack. With this LC, Marsh can now increase the incoming crit damage attack from her ally and making her a solid support. Pure Baptism is actually might work, but the situation is probably going to be a little bit more specific, so using this might not be comfortable for most players, as there are other safer options. Boot Hill's LC can be a great help if you want to build her as a full breaker. And this is the damage comparison between the 5 star LCs. I intentionally did not include Boot Hill's LC since we want to focus on her crit build. Sleep Like the Dead may have the greatest amount of total damage, but due to its passive that grants the wearer extra 36% crit rate if her basic attack didn't result in crit hits, and it can only work once per 3 turns, so the total damage outcome won't be as consistent as others. As for the 4 star options, there is not a single LC that won't work with her, so I guess using any of this is actually fine. She can even benefit from some of the passive from subscribe for more, but cannot utilize this LC to its maximum potential. Since Marsh really needs her ultimate to activate both her 3 additional hits and her new last Edelon to get that extra 50% crit damage. Marsh 7 is a quite flexible and versatile unit. She can fit into many team comps and synergize with different characters, but I think this follow up lineup is probably going to be one of her best. Serving Topaz as her master that can frequently deal follow-up damage using Numbi can make Marsh 7 stack her charge more quickly. Robin here is a buffer for a dual DPS. You can swap Topaz with other characters like Clara or Yunli for example. Take note that you may swap Aventurine with a healer instead to increase the odds for the counter-attackers to be hit by enemies. Or you can try Dr. Ratio as the main damage dealer here. Robin can be swapped with other units that can give debuffs such as Silver Wolf, or let the Preservation Unit use the Trend LC to inflict burn. Another team variation would be Break Teams. This Firefly team is one of the examples. 
Of course, it's not going to be any better without Ruan Mei's presence, but it's good to see that another unit and a new character variation can fit into these team comps. You can tell March to serve Gallagher as her master, so that her toughness reducing abilities will be increased by 100%. To help Firefly deal more consistent damage, by exposing enemies to their weakness broken state. No need to worry about enemy not having imaginary weakness since her additional damage can follow her master's combat type, which in this case is fire from Gallagher, so she can still reduce enemy's toughness regardless. Actually, you can form many other team comps, but I think so far, at least before she's officially released, these are her best team comps. If you have any other team examples, please let me know in the comment section. So, should you build her or just neglect her once you claim her for free? To me, Marsh is a fresh character with a very few kits that can be compared to the existing character, except for Jade. She can act as a sub DPS that deals significant damage, and she can be a toughness breaker too that can help your main DPS like Boot Hill or Firefly, or maybe some other breaker that will be released in the near future. So if you feel that you are currently playing with one of the team comps I mentioned earlier in the previous section, I think you should try to build her and try her potential in some of the endgame contents. Her damage is worth it, relatively easy access to full Eidolons, multi-functions, and she is... March, our best girl in the game right now. So that's all for the Hunt March 7 changes and her possible builds for me. Please let me know if there is any missing or incorrect information in the comment box below. And I'm curious to know, are you guys happy with her current kit, or it feels like there's something lacking? And what kind of team comps you will use for March in the future? Comment down below also. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video and support this channel by subscribing. I will see you humans in the next video.